Airsoft machine guns are a ton of fun because of the fact that you have full auto, you have seemingly endless rounds, but how can you actually use it to be effective on the airsoft field? Well, today we're gonna to talk about everything that you need to know to start out with airsoft machine guns. What's up, Airsofters? My name is Lane, and welcome back to the BB Warrior. And today I am joined by Eric from Gun Gamers. Oh, hello. And Eric uses machine guns a lot. And we've got a ton of <laughs> different examples here to talk about today. But using a machine gun in Airsoft is really a much different experience than being a rifleman at, at any level of play. Yeah, well, and especially, you know, at Milsim Games. You know, this is one of those things where this weapon's class is super cool. But, you know, there are some fields, obviously, where everyone can just throw a drum mag into their M4 and then just go full auto. But if you go to games where there is a differential, a differential between the classes of weapons, then the machine gun class becomes a unique beast unto itself. Because now you have to have a replica of a real world machine gun. And also, some machine gun replicas we have on this table just do the job better than throwing a drum mag into an RPK or a AK or an M4. And that's a consideration that we'll talk about as we talk about machine gun shopping. But it is absolutely just the best time being the base of fire for your squad. Yeah, and I like, personally, I really enjoy those games where you are rewarded for carrying the, the big gun, gives you an advantage, it gives you having the full auto, having the box mag, things like that. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at actually the setups we have here, because when you're looking at airsoft machine guns, there, over the last couple of years especially, there's been a lot of new ones out on the market, mm -hmm. but there's also been some that have been around forever. So my personal machine gun that we've talked about in a couple different videos on the channel is this GMP Stoner 63 A1, has the rail on it, and I keep this pretty slick. The only thing that would be on here that is not on there right now is some sort of vertical foregrip and then a flashlight or a laser if I was using night vision. But Eric, you've got a ton of different options here on the table. This is my GNP Mark 46. Uh, I use this for Milsim West with Task Force Keg, and I've also handed this off in a bunch of games. Uh, I use it, I mean, really, I just like to use machine guns. Uh, so this one I would usually use uh, with a slick top or a Keg Kosher, you know, Comp M4 red dot. Uh, and then I usually just run it with either a grip pod or a night style grip on the front. Uh, and then if I need an IR capability for night games, uh, I actually have a Steiner D-Ball I2 that I use, and I'll just put that on the sides, and I'll have the pressure pad on there. So I do like to keep the actual gun itself pretty light. I did cut the bipod because in reference photos for 10th Mountain and you know other military use, you do see people not using the standard factory bipod and instead swapping it out for a grip pod or a night's grip. Um, I really like that. The other thing I really like about this machine gun is that the box mag is directly integrated into the wiring harness of the gun itself. And having that box mag directly integrated into the wiring harness does a great job of making sure that it's winding itself, that it continues to feed, and that it is just keeping up with the rate of fire of the gun. Uh, but other than that, I just have a two-point sling on here, and it's a pretty simple setup, but it does work. Just ask my friend Ian Leary when we uh, rolled his PB at Balkar. <laughs> and then uh, what are the other two examples we have here, just in case they're not in the frame? Oh, well, I mean, this is my new favorite. Uh, this is a chopped LCT RPD. Uh, I just took the front to a bandsaw and cut off the whole front end with the bipod and everything. Uh, you know, normally I'm not a big fan of chopped machine guns because I feel like it's kind of gaming the game at the cost of historical provenance, but there's a ton of historical provenance for chopped RPDs, so that makes me feel better about it. Uh, this is as slick and as basic as it gets. It's just a gearbox in a body that looks away, uh, and then it also has a box mag that is or drum mag that is totally separate system. So I only ever run this on 7.4 volt batteries because otherwise this drum mag doesn't do a great job of keeping up. So that is a downside, but it's such a fun gun. It's so cool, it looks nice, it feels good, it's so pretty, uh, so very fun. And then I also have here, uh, once again, not set up how I normally use it because I've got those accessories kind of shifted around. This is my a &K PKM. Uh, I totally rebuilt this inside. I added some Zenitco style furniture and I added uh, 
a literal rag taped to the stock as a cheek riser for putting an EOTAC on here when I want to use it like that. And I also have a tracer unit on here. And tracer units on machine guns especially, I think are an incredible use case for tracers. You know, you just, you get such a stream of BBs and when you are the base of fire for your squad, it's great to be able to indicate to people where you're shooting, especially if you're working with people who don't have night vision. Because then they see your tracer BBs going, they know where you're shooting and they know where to shoot at. And as a machine gunner, you know, you're probably going to be on the front line of that engagement shooting a lot. So that's a lot of information being distributed among your platoon. Yeah, so let, let's take a moment to continue that conversation of attachments. If you look at all of these and, you know, some of them, like, like you said, the parts are moving around. But the two things I noticed that aren't on any of these examples, there's never a bipod. And there's no magnified optics either. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like that plays into kind of a lot of people think that the light machine gun is the guy in the back who is hunkered down, who's just going to be spraying down BBs. Like they're, they're not going to be very mobile, but I don't think that's actually the, the great way to use a machine gun in an airsoft application. So in the real world, you know, you have machine guns that have much, much more effective range than our airsoft counterparts. I mean... The PKM in the real world shoots a 7.62 by 54 rimmed cartridge. That's the same cartridge that's being used in stuff like the Dragunov SVD and the Mosin Nagant. Like those are powerful battle rifle cartridges being propelled a really long distance. And you do have a lot of recoil that can, comes with those as well. So yeah, you're going to post up on a bipod and you're going to, you know, Spray and pray, but then you actually see other examples of that where you do see things like the chopped RPD, where now that's a little closer to how machine guns are used in airsoft, where it's essentially a highly mobile base of fire. Because mobility with the engagement ranges being as limited as they are in airsoft matters a ton more than your ability to sit in a bunker and you know just look through a scope for a long time. You know, magnified optics absolutely have their place. There are good use cases for them, and bipods have their place, and there are good use cases for them. But based on the way that I play the machine gun role, which is very mobility heavy, I would rather have iron sights or red dot and a vertical foregrip that lets me manhandle the weapon a little bit if I need it, or if it's the RPD, that's as light and as small as I need it to be, just as it is. And I, and I think to have to use these to their full potential, you you have to be able to move in and be aggressive. And with that comes the ability to carry this thing for mm -hmm. however long that game is. So it, you can obviously tell Eric and I are different sized human beings, <laughs> um, even though we're we're like almost the same height. You're you're just a much larger man than me. Yeah. So that that PKM, you can carry that thing very easily. That, that's a struggle for me, whereas with the reason I ultimately went with the Stoner 63 is it is a small enough platform that I can continually keep my gun up and engaged for a long enough time for airsoft situations. Don't and fit dare chop. And fitness <laughs> definitely comes into play a lot when you're in this role. Like You need to have yeah. the, the muscle and the cardio to be able to keep up with everybody else. Well, and that's the big thing is, you know, I think a lot of people see the machine gun role and think that, oh, well, as long as I can carry the thing, then I'll be useful. But you also have to be able to move with the thing. So even if you're like me, where you're just a big dude, like, yeah, I have a pretty easy time carrying these. But if I couldn't run with them and get where I'm needed, then I'm not very useful. You know, you really have to be able to not just do the weightlifting, carrying part of it, you also have to be able to do the movement part of it and be constantly looking for, is there a better position I could get into for a field of fire? Coordinate with your squad and your group and, you know, put together where you should be moving. Yeah, I, I think another, another thing that really plays into using a machine gun effectively is communicating and having a group of people with you because if you just bring this to an open play and even if you just have one other guy with you that you can shoot and move with that's going to be much more beneficial than being with a bunch of randoms where there isn't really any unit cohesion yeah or even if you are with a bunch of randoms uh you know here's the thing about being a machine gunner right you are the loud super heavy volume of fire player be loud and constantly be calling out positions call out where you're shooting at, tell people to call out their targets for you because they already know where you are, right? Like yeah, you're not you're, 
yeah, you're not hiding. You're shooting at them. They know that there's BBs coming from where you're at. So now it's your job to also help coordinate figuring out where they're at. And if you can even... I've done things with like random groups of people where I would just come up out of a position. People are kind of stuck. No one's really talking to each other. So they don't really know what to do. And as soon as you just get people talking to each other, it changes the whole dynamic of the gunfight. Yeah, so, so this can be an incredibly valuable tool on the airsoft field. But of course, that's assuming that it's working. And I think one of the big things about airsoft machine guns that a lot of brand new players are not prepared for is sometimes they're going to need some care. They're going to need some upgrades put in there. And I feel like one of the things that fails the most on airsoft machine guns is the box mags themselves. Yes. Uh, I highly recommend if you're going to any game where you're hoping to rely on a machine gun, bring at least one spare fully functioning box mag. Yeah. Because if you don't have a spare box mag or drum mag, odds are decent you might have a bad time. I'm trying really hard to find a spare drum for this thing because I don't have one right now. And when I bring this to games and I'm relying on it, I'm basically flipping a coin on if that thing's gonna keep running. Well, and I, and I mean, I, I've heard a lot of pushback to that idea of bringing an extra box. But if you're going to an event like, like if you bring out your gun to Milson West and your only feed system dies, that sucks for you, like you're done, you can't go back to the parking lot. And even if you are at a more casual game where you're allowed to go back to your car, if you carry a box mag, that means that you're not leaving the game for an hour to go to your car. Like, I, I, I feel like the extra weight, especially with something like a PKM, those are big boxes. Yep. But, by, but even if you just throw it in a backpack for the off chance that you need it, you're much better prepared for it. Like, I see a lot of people who build their kits for LMGs as just being very minimal and not making room for the extra box mag, but the utility of having it just in case, I think, is critically important. What I actually do for kits for machine guns uh, to build the room for the box mag is I'll just have tons of GP pouches and then whatever's not carrying the spare box mags is carrying all my sustainment for the game. So then I can make my ruck that much lighter and it just helps make the entire thing a more cohesive loadout. Uh, but yeah, the spare box mag is absolutely crucial. Another thing that we've actually started recommending for like Task Force Keg is build a spare gearbox. Because uh, some of these, like this PKM here, Getting the gearbox out is an extremely simple affair. It's literally like two screws. So what we're doing with that PKM is we have a whole spare box mag, and then you have a spare set of tools, and all you have to do is pop a few screws, pop in, or not box, box mag, excuse me, spare gearbox. You pop out that gearbox, pop in the new one, and you're done. Another easy way to head off a lot of issues with machine guns is HPA. HPA is kind of the meta for high volume of fire machine guns, but the consideration with that and the reason why I stick with AEG is then if you go to 40 hour games, you have to carry 40 hours worth of air for a very high volume of fire weapon. So now you're talking about instead of carrying a few spare batteries and a spare box mag and maybe a spare gearbox, or honestly, I sometimes just run with a spare piston if I need to, uh, now you're carrying three big tanks of air and you have to have a spot for that in your kit so it's and those, it's and all those, balancing and that's just added weight and space in your yeah. ruck as well it's gonna be very uncomfortable at a milson west I, I think this you know if you're watching this video and you're like well i'm never going to carry a spare gearbox or i'm never going to buy a spare box I, I think you have to realize that out of pretty much any flavor of airsoft gun this is one of the most expensive ways that you can go like, it, stuff is yeah. going to break because of the volume that you go through. I think gas blowback rifles might be the only uh, competitor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's just because you're spending 60 bucks a mag and you're probably spending 100 bucks for a box. Yep. For a good box. Um, but, and I, I think the other issue is there's a lot of affordable machine guns that people, they're like, I, I only have to spend 300 bucks to be a good machine gunner. Awesome. And then they, they underperform. Yeah. So that's the thing is, not all machine guns are created equally. Uh, the features that I tend to look for in a machine gun, unless it's something really specialty and cool that we got way too cheap, like this RPD. Uh, like this RPD is just a one-off gun, so I forewent you know, having the box mag integrated into the wiring harness. Uh, I forewent having you know, a very specific LMG gearbox that's easy to get to. Uh, and the other thing that you 
really I think is important for a nice machine gun is a full metal construction for durability because when I'm out for a 40 hour game, I like having the confidence that if I trip and fall and land on this thing while I'm heading down the mountain at ball car, uh, <laughs> I like having the confidence that the gun's not gonna snap. Yeah, there, there's been a lot of, to kind of like break in to the cheap LMG market, there's been a lot of like plastic ones that have come out and there's not, not as sturdy. They almost kind of remind me of like way back in the day, the old star mm -hmm. M249s yeah. that are like more creaky than an Xbox controller. Like that's how bad they're made. Um, so definitely having the all metal body, I completely agree. It's extra weight, but it's also going to guarantee that this giant thing, which is cumbersome, is not going to break if you trip or fall. So I think it's definitely, it's worth its weight for the durability that you get out of it. Yeah. I mean, I actually, when I tripped on this thing at ball car, I bent out the bracket that mounts the box mag because I landed on the box mag. Uh, but I was able to beat that back into shape with a multi-tool and use it for the final assault. So... Not too many plastic bodied guns I can think of you're doing that with. Well, and you know, it's funny you say that because I'm thinking about converting mine to be a M249 style box mag because those have, I would say, probably the best aftermarket part mm -hmm. support yes. compared to the one off stoner style boxes, which aren't fantastic, admittedly. Um, and to switch that out, I'd have to do a 3D printed bracket here. And I'm like, oh, what if I fall on the box mag and break yep. my bracket? Also, box mags are heavy when they're fully loaded. Uh, one of the things that I found with the PKM is when you fully load this box mag with three twos, unless you use some type of tape or a Milson West tourniquet works really well to bring it back up, the box will sag slightly out of engagement with the body and it won't feed. So you have to like really crank that thing up with some tape to make sure that just the weight of the ammo you have in there doesn't prevent it from feeding. <laughs> peak of airsoft engineering uh, that that is incredible but overall if you're looking for an airsoft light machine gun it is a incredibly rewarding way to yes. play for sure it, nothing nothing else you do in this hobby really matches it having that firepower it's just so much different especially if you're the type of player that does go to the place where riflemen are capped at semi-automatic it's just a different way to play yeah it's so much fun, and it's it's such a rewarding, cooperative type of role as well. Because while, yes, you're capable of racking up really high kill counts because you're just putting out so much volume of fire, what's really great about being a machine gunner is when you can pin people in place to let your elements maneuver and wipe them out, or you can you know get on a point and just keep everyone from advancing on you while your forces are creating a defense. It's just... It's a very intense, high action type of role. So make sure that your machine gun is ready for an intense, high action type of play. Yeah, so if you wanna feel cooler than you ever have in Airsoft before, LMGs are definitely the way to go. And in today's video, you know, we covered our personal setups. We covered, you know, kind of the things to consider when you're buying one in terms of construction, the money you're gonna to to spend down the road, and you know, how to use it effectively on the field. So I think that's just about everything for a beginner's guide to using a light machine gun. Yeah, if you want a more advanced version where we start going into specific upgrades and builds, then uh, go ahead and leave a request for that in the comments. Yeah, but that's going to do it for today's video. Eric, thank you so much for joining me. Always a pleasure. I'll always talk about machine guns. Uh, of course. <laughs> and if you want to watch more great airsoft content, you can click this video right here, or you can click this one right here that YouTube thinks you'd like. But my name is Lane, and we'll see you next time. Peace. See ya.